everybody. This is our last show. April Fools! <laughs> Warning. The following podcast is another wasted hour. Warning. The following podcast is another wasted hour. Don't waste my motherfucking time! Victor, it is so incredibly difficult to do things that are timely because when it's April Fools here, it ends up being like two weeks away from April Fools when this goes out. So here we are on like April 4th, which is as close as we can get to April Fools Day, doing an April Fools joke. But you're going to hear it like a week later. I know it sounds like we're complete idiots, but we're not. We're very witty. We're just not good at getting things out quickly. So, man, if only we'd planned ahead. Ah. Yeah, exactly. If only we had some type of pipeline where we could just put our show in and the next day it was done. But no, you know what? We're lazy. So engineer Adam needs like (laughs) 10 days to get his stuff done. And then I need another like like half a year to be able to write everything up and take pictures. And then sometime right. next year, you'll hear this. You know what? I just thought about it, Victor. I'll, we- wait, I'll be 15 minutes late. So right, and you'll be 15 minutes late. <laughs> I just realized what we should be doing, Victor. We should What's just that? do next year's show right now. And then we release it right on time. <laughs> April 1st of next it year. Just, uh, doesn't time hop do that? They like send yeah. you on April fools. They send you uh, stuff from like 42 years from now. Yeah, exactly. We could totally do perfect, that. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. We'll do that. All right. So uh, that's our plan. It's now not uh, March anymore. It is now into April. Uh, we're starting to get warm weather. Uh, we're supposed to get snow in April. I don't know what's happening anymore with the world, but what we do know is March madness is over. That's great. Right? Uh, is it? I mean, I kind of like some madness in my life. The tournament's over. There's no longer any basketball we need to worry about. Instead, it's all been replaced with two ignorant, uninformed, ill-advised, self-deprecating morons ranting out about opinions they have no right to have, which are probably wrong and absolutely do not matter. Our goal here at Another Wasted Hour is to convince you that where we hail from, just outside Washington, D.C., is not just a city of politics and scandals, but one brimming with art, music, and culture. As impossible as that may seem. So listeners, now that you know why you're here, I'm Keith and my co-host is Victor. Say hello, Victor. What's a giraffe's favorite fruit? (laughs) What's the giraffe's favorite fruit? The nectarine. (laughs) You didn't get to do the bad joke this at the beginning of the show. You're all right. You got it in now. More importantly, better luck next time. Yes. More importantly, straight from a hand pulled cart, we have Rickshaw Lizard. Yes, gentlemen. (laughs) So let me introduce you real quick. Uh, We have Pete. Hello, Pete. Hello. Hello. And we have Eric. Hey. Excellent. So they are guests today. What do you guys uh, do with the band Rickshaw Lizard? Well, our tagline is groove, rock, funk, and jams. Nice. And uh, instruments? What do you guys play? I'm the drummer, Eric. And I'm the guitar player. Excellent. He also sings and lead. Singer and oh, yeah. Kind of lead singer also. It sounded like there was an ellipsis at the end of that, like, <laughs> I'm the guitar player. <laughs> but you, you needed somebody to bring you in. And lead singer. Right. Yes. And then yeah. you're like, oh, yeah. Oh, that thing as well. Right, right, that right. minor uh, thing of being lead singer. I may have just deleted my whole track. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Victor, you've deleted your whole track. We, yeah. were that, we were that bad? Yeah, really? What's going on? Uh, this program <laughs> crashed and restarted. Nice. That's Sony fixed. Not having any luck today. I know that you're not going to believe me, but we're usually very professional. <laughs> <laughs> this just doesn't happen to be one of those times. Apparently. It's a cakewalk, right? I mean, geez. every once in a while you get like a crazy show, right? One mm. where I didn't turn the right microphone on. One where we didn't, where we hit record and it didn't record, so we had to do a second show. <laughs> it's like we did a two-hour studios show here. that day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, but those are rare. If you think we have like. 62 shows or something like that and we've had about three mishaps you guys get the fourth one apparently Mm. that's like oh crap the hard drive just reformatted itself yeah i think i'm gonna just keep this recording and then i'm gonna see if i can get uh adam to just mix this down as like our our first blooper or something there we go perfect i pressed record again if that matters so i just kept on going (laughs) are you still going I started recording again, so about three minutes in, my track begins, but that's okay. I'm good with that. How do you guys feel? That's fine. Well, yeah. As long as, long you, as, long Nobody as you cares about here, what I have right? to say anyway. Yeah. No, I think we've got it. We've got his mumbly voice, obviously, on Skype. La, 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 la. 
We're just going to have people hear us like have technical difficulties, which, you right. know what? We're pulling back the curtain. People get to know what it's like trying to do a podcast mm. uh, all by yourself. So, especially uh, via <laughs> Skype uh, with a guy who uh, doesn't know how has tech a works. Shitty computer and does like, I give off a low level EMP. So, <laughs> shit just malfunctions around me, I swear. <laughs> It's okay. Adam will do all the work. Well, welcome back, uh, Victor. I'm glad you were able Yay. to join us again like a real boy. Um, so <laughs> in studio, studio boy. we have Rickshaw Lizard. We have uh, Eric and Pete. You guys are playing a pretty big show coming up uh, Saturday, April 28th at Fishhead Cantina, which is a venue that I feel like has been around for decades and is just a stalwart kind of place that everybody who's anyone goes and plays. And you're going to be there uh, April 28th. That's up in near Baltimore. It's called Hellthorpe? I Hellthorpe. Think Hellthorpe. Just outside yeah. of Baltimore. Right, right near Baltimore. It's South Baltimore. Baltimore. If you know where Baltimore is, it's kind of there. You'd be <laughs> able to hit it with a missile. Well, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's right <laughs> in really, between really uh, 695 and 95, so it's right in there. Yeah. Nestled in there. You nicely. have to worry about all the weird parking that you'd have to do in Baltimore, right? Mm, right, exactly. Because they've got, like, actual parking, yeah. but it's still cool enough and near the city that you could go grab, like, great food in the city before the show or something. Actually, they have yep. sushi there. It's pretty what? good. So, yeah, yes. it's a sushi bar, too. Oh. It's a restaurant and sushi bar. That I didn't even know. I thought they just served fish heads. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't didn't sound appetizing. Boiled I'll be fish heads. Yeah, that was it. Roly poly fish heads. <laughs> um, so uh, so yeah, so that's really exciting. Uh, we have a, a track from you guys that you've shared with us, which is very cool, called Move With Me. If you're really excited about this and you need to hear it, fast forward to the one hour mark of this show and you can listen to uh, Move With Me, which is from the EP, also called Move With Me. So it's got to be a really good track because it's the title track. Right? That's right. Yeah. Excellent. So go there right now. Go listen to it and then make sure you come back. Yeah. Yeah. Or don't no, come back. I have to and say. Just go to their website, www.rickshawlizard.com and become a fan of theirs and then never talk to us again. That's fine. <laughs> uh, I have to say, I do like the way you move. You do? Da 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 da. All right. I had to put that in. <laughs> I like the I'm way you move. I'm just going to shut up for the works. next hour now. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> So, uh, so we're talking about March Madness. I was thinking about this because everyone gets really excited about this. It goes on the news. People like leave work early and they do all these different crazy things. Why don't we have more months with nicknames, right? We don't, we don't have any more alliterative nicknames for months, just March, which isn't really even the best month. If you're thinking about it, like, I mean, April is a perfectly fine month. All we have for April no, is April is a warm up for another month. Yeah, because right. April, April showers. showers bring May flowers. Mm. It's really about May, right? right. We're like yeah. we're looking forward to some flowers. April, you're gonna get in there early and make some stuff happen. Mm -hmm. How could right. we be really up shitty? The rest of so the who could it be better later? Well, I got an idea for August. Yeah, what would you do for August? Uh, August to dust. August to dust. Yes, and the idea is uh, I, I have I don't, to hear this. I don't want to take. I don't ever want to take a vacation in August again after last hurricane season. Uh, oh no! Did you take a vacation into a hurricane? Yeah, actually, we 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 took a tour of of Florida. We went down the the the, the east coast, and yeah. we went down to Key West and mm -hmm. stayed a couple nights, and then we went up in Tampa, and we we just you know it was just before all the hurricanes hit. Sure, I mean, we actually got a. a, a you know, tropical storm that passed through and we had to actually drive in it. It was just great fun. Yeah. Oh, so no. anyway, so I will never take a vacation again because August, like you turned to dust because of all the hurricanes. <laughs> I thought, I thought you know, they can, say, they can predict where hurricanes are going to go like two weeks in advance. Yeah, you but you already have to have your plane tickets and everything at that point. Mm -hmm. Right. You have to plan. Ahead I guess that makes sense. Yeah. And so I thought you were going to say like, we took a tour of Florida in one evening because we got caught in a hurricane <laughs> and just that's, tossed us around Florida. Yeah, I should have thought of that, but that's, yeah. I'm going to go with cool. agony, uh, agony um, August. I figure just, you just celebrate sunburns, mm -hmm. right? For all of August. Everyone gets, <laughs> yeah. That's that's what there August is reminding of me. Uh, yeah, I, I think we could have all types of things, all right? We could have Wait, wait, like, wait, hold on. There is a, there's a, a No Shave November. See, and then, uh, November. December, yeah, that's, that's and then January one. and February. All mm -hmm. of those. All the Harrys. <laughs> I would go that's with because you don't like, shave over the winter. Maybe Nom November. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a lot of eating Nom. in November, right? 
So nom nom November oh, or nap. I guess. Napping November. <laughs> right. right. I feel like these could all be, we could go places with this. I feel like there's an opportunity. If maybe we take some time and we put out, uh, you know, a calendar, uh, obviously with us in very sexy poses, because I know that that'll sell. And um, there we go. And then we just name all of the different months. If anybody who's listening has any ideas for what you would name months, we haven't really gotten a lot of emails because we haven't asked for it, but drop us an email. I think we have contact at anotherwastehour.com or catch us up on Facebook and let us know what would what would you name a month? What, what would be different? Uh, how could you nickname something to make it maybe a little more popular? So, you can also hit my MySpace. So yeah. uh, I'll add you as a friend and I'll have 101 friends. Yeah, you can hit MySpace, which I believe yeah. is now run by terrorists. I'm not entirely <laughs> sure, but I heard a rumor <laughs> of that. MySpace. Wow. Well. Yes. Yes, it is. Uh, it is no longer MySpace. I'll tell you that. Um, <laughs> anyhow, so uh, moving on, since you guys have already done touring of uh, Florida, you've done music, you've got an EP out and everything, we'd like to put you in a role that maybe you haven't tried before. Um, we'd like to see how you do as the editor in chiefs of a brand new publication. You guys up for this? Sure. Yes. All right. So this is uh, uh, something we like to call the weather report. And what we're going to do is we're going to pitch you some some uh, uh, real life news uh, articles that we found on the web. You're going to let us know whether or not they should be news, whether or not they make it into your publication. Mm. You can tell us why or why not. You can tell us where in the publication it goes. But mm. most importantly, when we get to the end of all this, all right, you have to find out a name. You get a name for your new publication, so people can go and look at it at the pub, uh, the uh, newsstands. Assuming they're at the are public place stands. with the name with the where things do in public. Yeah, that that that. So we're gonna do a couple of longer <laughs> pitches, and then we'll do a couple shorter ones. If you have any questions or anything, or want any more um, information, feel free to ask. We may or may not have it for you. Um, <laughs> so, okay, uh, Victor, how about you get us started? Uh, oh, I, I laughed for a solid half an hour about this one. Oh, Man yeah. banned from hotel due to suitcase full of sausages. Nice. He, uh, he, the 17 years later, the ban was finally lifted and he was invited back to the hotel. Now, um, let, let me read you just the gist of this before you guys, this, this thing, keep, it just keeps on coming at you. I'll be honest. See, I man, was going to read this entire letter. But if you, oh, okay. you get the good parts, and, and I'm going to switch up here. because I think this needs it. Waiting with bated yeah. breath. Yes. Let's see. Man banned from Five Star Hotel after a suitcase full of sausages led to his room being ruined by a band of sick seagulls. I don't know why sick. Oh, because they ate the sausages, right? Uh, has finally been allowed to return after 17 years. Nick was concerned the pepperoni would spoil, so he left it next to an open window to keep cool in the chilly Canadian air. As you A 40-strong colony of seagulls arrived. He says, uh, I remember walking down the long hall and opening the door to my room to find an entire flock of seagulls in my room. And I ran. I ran so far away. <laughs> that's I ran not how it goes. That's great. That's he not in the away. story. I read the story. You're making that up. Oh, man. So, it says, uh, so I took great. off one of my shoes and I threw it in frustration in the direction of a seagull. And both the seagull and the shoe went out the window. <laughs> Unbeknownst to him, uh, the commotion was happening during a, a high tea and particularly busy time in the late afternoon. Apparently, a tourist was struck by Nick's falling shoe. <laughs> yes, <laughs> and then oh. and then later by a seagull. Did you uh, read right. that? It says, uh, "I can still remember the look on the cleaning lady's face when she opened the doors." He adds, "I had absolutely no idea what to tell her, so I said, I'm sorry,' and then I went to dinner." That's <laughs> 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 what a dick. Wow. It says uh, that he, it, upon his return, now he he sent it a. a an apologetic letter, and they let him back in now. Says uh, he gave the whole staff pepperoni sausages as a peace offering. <laughs> I find it funny and ironic. <laughs> yeah. I There was an interesting piece of that because he revealed that apparently not only uh, do seagulls just shit all over the place. Uh, we knew that bit. But apparently, I don't know if it just has to do with pepperoni or in general... But I guess if it's a spicy pepperoni, they also drool all over the place, apparently. <laughs> so this this yeah. room was just wrecked. Mm. So at one point he was trying, I don't think you said this, he was trying to get one of the seagulls out and it wouldn't leave. 
It was like being very obstinate about it. <laughs> so you ended up lunging at it with a towel and it like, and it wrapped it in the towel and threw it out the, the window to get it out of the room. He had forgotten and nailed somebody. that when you, <laughs> when you wrap a seagull in a towel, it can't fly. <laughs> So it oh. also struck the visitor oh on the my. sidewalk. Oh. So they got hit by a shoe and a bird. Oh. <laughs> what kind of day is that? And worse than all, it's a mm. seagull. It's the rat of the sky. <laughs> yes. He just got nailed yeah. by it. It's yeah. not often oh. they, they they run into pepperoni, I suppose. Yeah, no, it's it isn't. So um <laughs> So uh, it is quite an involved story. Um, if he didn't tell him, by the way, uh, the man actually uh, had his ban removed. After 17 years, they, he, he sent them a letter to say, you know, I've learned my lesson. And they have decided to allow him to come back to the hotel after 17 years. Right, they, they invited <laughs> yeah. him back, actually. They were like, all right, you're older and wiser. Yeah. Come stay with us. So is it, is it news? Does it make your publication? 17 years later. I guess if it's a candidate, it's news. What do you think? Yeah. yeah, but it's, it's, yeah, it's, we'll call that news. Yeah, you got that. Either that right? or w, right. WKRP episode. You did a way better job, Victor, than I was. I was going to literally just spend 10 minutes doing this entire uh, letter that he sent because it's hilarious. Uh, we're going to we'll put this it's up on so Facebook ridiculous. and on Twitter. And please, everyone who's listening, take a moment to just read through the blow by blow as he explains <laughs> how horrible this day goes, because it Seriously. is remarkable. This thing just, it, this article just keeps coming at you, hitting you with punch after punch because it's yeah. all amazing. Yeah, it is. All right. So I don't know if this is a great follow up to it, but I just want to share a little something about my own uh, moral standards and something that I've revealed uh, that I found on the internet that challenges those. So I once watched a gender reveal video uh, where there's a party where a couple sliced into a baby shaped cake right revealing a pink flesh like inside of the baby shaped cake announcing to the world that their future child would be a girl now at the time i thought that this was the most obvious sign in the world that two people were not ready to yet take care of another life right <laughs> like i was like no you shouldn't have a kid you just basically cut a analog of a child to get into <laughs> its middle and then celebrate it, right? Ah, look, we got the baby. Nice. Okay. Well, at that point, at the gender reveal party, yeah. uh, you don't find out about the gen the sex, really, they should say, the sex of the baby until about 20 weeks. Right. Right? At that point, she's probably pretty miserable. Mm -hmm. uh, pregnancy is not fun for most women. That's true. So they're, it's probably cathartic. To cut a baby. They're yes. probably I'm, like, this son of a bitch. Ah! <laughs> I'm not even going to get, get into the the mm -hmm. um, the details of the fact that it might actually supposed to be a, like a sex reveal party. Because who knows? Maybe that baby is going to be born a woman but thinks it's a boy. Right? We awesome. don't know. Mm -hmm. We could we would have to ask the baby and have it make a cake. Right. So so that besides that, here's the thing. I thought that that was the most obvious sign in the world that they shouldn't be parents. Right. Right. You see what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, right. Yes. Oh, yeah. In fact, Definitely. I wasn't sure you're going with that because you didn't quite yeah. reveal at first. It was about a baby. So the sex reveal party, I just thought this was a little interesting. Right. Yeah. No. Yeah. That, that totally changes the type of party it is. Um, one, you should have kids at the other. You should not. And um, so <laughs> I was wrong. I can admit that now. I I uh, have found something new. This week, a man placed a watermelon in the jaws of a 10-foot alligator in his front lawn. That alligator snapped his death-bringing jaws down, revealing the blue goo contained in the watermelon. <laughs> Great news, everyone! A man named oh, T-Mike wow. the Gator King is having a baby boy. Or what the gator likes to call a Mike Nugget, I assume. That, yeah, that's a thing. There's a video. That was the gender reveal. That's An great. alligator ate something that is about the size of an actual newborn. Wow. So the first one was that alligator is probably really pissed. <laughs> right? yeah. Dude, like, it's like ah, ah fruit, fuck you. This isn't crunchy <laughs> enough. Um, <laughs> I wonder what the blue must have tasted this like. This isn't Doritos. <laughs> yeah, right. 
it's a, a los a los uh, locos baby um so uh yeah so i don't know i found this really disturbing and uh so to me it's newsworthy what do you guys think is it news i don't think so what oh oh, <laughs> oh my god maybe for in florida i don't know but his name is t mike the gator king <laughs> It must be Florida. <laughs> that might be news by itself, but this 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 is stupid, yeah. Keith. Good guess. You're better than this. It was Louisiana. Okay. Which, okay. That's the most Louisiana sounding baby reveal I can think of. Um, right. All right, Victor, pull out ahead. Let's see what I can hit you with here. Man with service goat kicked off bus, forced to walk home. Oh. Let me emphasize, man with service goat. Goat kicked off the goat. bus. Not like a little cute goat, like the little ones. This thing is the fucking like the mascot of a university size goat. Mm -hmm. And its name is Deer. Deer the goat. Deer the goat. Fuck yes. that. Okay. Why would you right. do that? Deer the goat. I don't know. It's like naming your dog Otter. It's just dumb. No, that's stupid. <laughs> they should feed those people to that alligator. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. This was uh, in Detroit, so it's not really close to Louisiana. But if you I will drive take your them service to that goat on a bus down to, said uh, attempted to catch a, Eric Brown attempted to catch a bus around 8 p.m. Okay. Sunday in Detroit, but the driver said it was a no go when he spotted Brown's service goat deer I, I climbing it, aboard with him. I believe it's a no goat. It was what he was really no going. That was a no goat. Yes. I get on the bus and the driver was like, "What are you doing here? You can't have a goat on the bus." I, said, mm -hmm. I take the goat everywhere I go because he's my service animal. He's my service uh, <laughs> I was trying to get home as well, just like everybody else. It's like, hmm. uh, for uh -oh. somehow, he says, uh, sometimes the goat makes it easier for me to communicate. Let that there sink we go. in. We've, we've lost you Let some, it Victor. It's, it's a technical nightmare in April. That's what we're having. I think you're back. But you're so back. Yeah, your cell phone's terrible. Did you hear about my uh, uh, entire spiel there? Oh, we man. heard that there's a goat and it's a service goat and it goes everywhere. And then you just now, became now a statue. You're and I think now you did you're, it again. you're cutting out. So the question is, gentlemen, <laughs> since Victor is not is talking like a robot right now, uh, is it news? Well, I have to ask this question. Yeah. What, what service does the goat provide? Yeah. I assume providing milk. <laughs> That's my guess. Uh, <laughs> I say no. You guys couldn't hear it, but it recorded on my track over here. It's yeah. He says uh, the goat often makes it easier for him to communicate. <laughs> he's not blind. <laughs> he's not deaf. How he's ironic. not like movement impaired, some sort of handicap. Sometimes he just needs to pet his goat so that he can talk <laughs> to people. Yeah. Okay. So the bus driver was like, nah, nah, bro. <laughs> he had to walk four miles home. That's crazy. <laughs> I didn't even realize it until just now. That my service uh, animal is my penis. I didn't know that. I sometimes have to pet it to talk to people. But sometimes you have to service it, is what you're saying, right? right. <laughs> but see, so, this guy fucked up because the, the bus, they let me have my service giraffe all the time. So I don't really know what this guy's problem was. With his nectarines? Uh, right. Uh, so it's, it, it's, Sometimes it helps me get attention. <laughs> That's all it does. It breaks the That's ice. What do you guys think? News, not news. It's a no goat. Not news, no. Not news. No goat. Nah, balls. It's a no, no goat. goat. It's oh, no that's goat. very sad. All right. Um, I, I'll hit you with this with the um, uh, with the headline here. Uh, one needle used for up to thirty people at Toronto Health Fair. I mean, you know what's cool about health fairs? You can learn about if you're unhealthy and fix some shit, right? Like. You find out you have high blood pressure. You can get discounts on gym memberships, meal plans, other programs to build healthy habits. At the health fair at my office, uh, they'll give you a flu shot and uh, they'll take a bit of your blood for a biometric screening. No big deal. They poke your finger with like a little needle thing, right? A prick. Yeah. And then they <laughs> uh, take a drop of blood and they can measure all sorts of stuff. I know you guys aren't medical professionals. What do you think the next step is after that? You would be correct if you said, throw away the fucking needle. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. At the very least, yes. put it in the dishwasher. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> if you were to just say, not use it again Don't on 30 other people, you would, you're doing better than this particular. Again. Yeah. So, 
Uh, yeah, the uh, needles were quote unquote not constantly changed or consistently changed between clients during the free tests. Uh, the March 25th health fair organized by uh, Vision Infinite Foundation in Toronto. Uh, Toronto Public Health has been called and written to everyone that had the glucose levels checked at the fair, recommending they get blood tested as a precaution because now <laughs> you, your glucose might be fine. You might have AIDS. There's a chance. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, so the woman who attended the fair, uh, held at the community center in Toronto's East and told organizers during the event that she had seen testers reuse the Lancet uh, vision infinite director, Sahad Shakar said uh, organizers uh, immediately shut down the testing station, which was run by a pharmacy staff from a nearby shoppers uh, drug mart. Maybe don't go there. Uh, Apparently not so immediately because they were, they were doing that for a while. Right. Or there was a really 30, fast 30 line. wiles. Mm. To yeah. be precise. And they yeah. called paramedics who uh, in turn notified the uh, Toronto Public Health, he added. So there yeah. you go. Uh, mm. Is that terrorism? <laughs> That's well, first, inappropriate things to recycle. Needles. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Toilet yeah. paper. Uh-huh. Condoms. Yes. Bullets. Yep. <laughs> uh, recycle bins. I'm sure the list is quite long. <laughs> well, that's kind of... Well, you, just, need, you need that to keep recycling. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I would want not want to have blood work done at a fair. First of all, have you seen the carnies that work there? <laughs> I think it's a different kind of fair. Oh, yeah, I don't they think you're on like the cabbage. Ferris wheel when this is happening. I'm not but, so sure. Yeah, but that would be fun. Yes, right? Wouldn't mm -hmm. it? The guess your weight booth would be a little easier. Mm -hmm. just, they'd just be like, "This is your weight. We have a scale. <laughs> right. It's a health fair." Um, so uh, like, guess your blood pressure wait no we got that too yeah <laughs> guess your cholesterol so uh is it news uh i yeah, say I, yes that's news yeah. Yeah. absolutely news stay yes. away from the fair well, stay away from health it was fairs. unfair <laughs> stay away from needles at health fairs <laughs> yeah Let's don't put it that way don't do that at all ever mm -hmm. um okay so We've done kind of our bigger pitches. What we're going to do is a kind of a rapid lightning round. We're going to make some headlines. We're not going to pitch it to you. We're just going to go off the headlines. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. We'll try to like fill it in. But instead of our bit, right? Because, uh, you know, it's getting to closing time of this particular publication. So, Victor, what do you have <laughs> right. for your first rapid fire? It's like your reporter ran into your office and he says, uh, Dude, I got the breaking story. Zombie-like raccoons spark concern in Ohio. News. Done. Sold. Uh, Guess where I'm driving to after the show? No. Ohio. What? Oh, no. We have this concern. All right. All right. Can you oh, even, I don't know. You can, can you say it back? Do you, did you catch it? No. It seems like a lot of words. All right. So I get, I get to run in now? All right. All right. Go for it. All right, bosses. I got a great one. We run it tonight. A 36-year-old woman says that Ancestry.com DNA test revealed her father. It's her parents' fertility doctor. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's news. Ah, it's like finding wow. out it's the mailman. Yeah. <laughs> sure. It's like, yeah, great news. news. You got pregnant. <laughs> yes. I did it. <laughs> Fertility news. Uh, yep. Fertility news. Yep. All right. So both news is what's your next one, Victor? This just in condom snorting challenge, a dangerous trend among US teens. What are they they doing? just they got tired of Tide Pods and decided to move on to something else stupid. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard about this? No. no. So I, I'll explain real quickly. There was a time, I think, when we were kids that we may have done something similar. When you were, did you have anyone like in your class that tried to like, um, like gross people out by taking like a spaghetti noodle and like get, pulling it into their nose and then out of their mouth and they like floss their head or anything? Did it, did you see this? Yeah, yeah. No, I see, I saw actually, somebody my do that. wife just told me about a story like that, of, of the condom thing. Yes, I yeah. just heard about that. Yes. So that's what they're doing is they're snorting the condom and pulling it out through their mouth. That's and then a very small number of them are dying. That's news. <laughs> <laughs> Minimal that's, casualties that's so news. far. No, the fun to casualty ratio is off the charts. It's <laughs> yeah. way fun having something well, snorted up your nose. <laughs> mm -hmm. and there is a better survival rate than uh, the Tide Pod devourers yeah no it's Ugh. it's, it's i don't think it's as bad as that i i don't know for sure but it seems like it's maybe less lethal so maybe we're trending in the right direction i mean that's mm. what i would wonder <laughs> so what do you think I don't know. Uh, news? good news there's a real steep downturn in nasal stds <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> all right we'll call that news news, news yeah all right awesome. sounds good last I, think but not I, I got you this week what's that 
I think I got you this week, Keith. No, oh, I got one left. We, I can tie oh, it shit. up here. <laughs> You're going to have to like really concentrate because this is a very dense uh, headline. All right, here we go. Offspring drummer. Do you know the band Offspring? Mm -hmm. Offspring drummer turned OBGYN saves prospective juror, juror in own malpractice trial. Chew on that for a second. Yeah. I, what? What, what was the verb there? What? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So he saved the life of a juror who has, I think he's having a heart attack, jumped out uh, in the middle of his own malpractice uh, trial, saved that dude's life. Mm. He was having malpractice in OBGYN, but he used to also uh, drum for the offspring. Wow. Which wow. I understand. So here's my theory about what the malpractice was is he was just going up to people's vaginas and being like, do not pediddle my vagina. Um, I'm guessing that word is funny. I assume that they throw out, they throw out the malpractice suit because he just saved a dude's life. So he's a great doctor, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, I don't know. Like, I feel like it would have gone. Yeah. It would have been thrown out either way. If he dies, the problem just kind of solved itself. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, it depends on how he dies. If he died by hanging, then yes, it would be a hung jury. So moving <laughs> on. <laughs> me. These are the bizarre. One question. Yes. One question. I, I'd say it's news. What did the, this guy have to do to the, the guy suing him? What did yeah. he have to do to his vagina to get the malpractice suit? No, the guy wasn't suing him. He was in the. He was a jury. He was a jury member. Oh, juror. Right. Yeah, he juror. was a juror. Never mind. He was a rural juror. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. So news? News, yeah. yeah. News. Yes, we'll call that news. Tied nice. it up at the last second. Mm -hmm. Will you, it's good to know. What it means is that Victor and I have equal uh, talents when it comes to searching out important news articles. <laughs> but we need to find out your talent now. You've already uh, taken the job as editor-in-chief. Now you got to move into the marketing department. What's going to be the name of this brand new publication? Hmm. That that was pretty foul. I call that foul weather news. Foul weather news. Is it? <laughs> is it? Is it like the bird that he had? Is it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like like uh, uh like chicken foul. All right. Foul weather news. I like it. <laughs> right. That's new. Nobody's like done it. that before. Yes. I think that's the most important thing is that we have something that's brand new. That, in my humble opinion. All right, foul really weather celebrates news. the seagull story. So that would be um, in newsstands here um, next week, I guess. Who knows? Um, so uh, while we have Max Hedrum as our uh, co-host, who keeps chopping in and out, uh, <laughs> I will move into our I, I next mean, interview. We want to find out. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> we nailed it. That's exactly it. Nope, that's how you sound to us. So now that everybody else knows what he sounds like, because we're recording in two different places. The magic is broken. Um, so uh, I think we've already established you guys are a band called Rickshaw Lizard. You play music. You told us a little bit. What was the catchphrase again that you guys have? Groove, rock, funk, jams. And so that's kind of the uh, the inspiration that you guys have in your music. Yes. Um, do you have kind of uh, any uh, bands or idols that you guys have looked up to to, to inspire your music? What have where do you pull each of those? I'm hearing three different <laughs> things. You've got funk, rock, jams. Or there's yes. one more, right? Mm -hmm. Groove. 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 There's four mm -hmm. things. Where do you pick your uh, funk from? Well, I, I think the the funk really comes from Pete. and and, and That's not nice and, to say about <laughs> Pete. <laughs> he's a good smelling dude. Yes. Well, yeah, I mean, my his, God. His syncopations, uh, he's very syncopated. And, and, and also Hans Tronic, yeah. our bass player, who actually, I, I like to, I've nicknamed him the bassigator because right. he instigates a lot of nice. things with his bass. So. Uh, and he that's really where the funk watermelons. side comes from. But for me, I'm more of a, a, a blues rock guitar player. I, I take my, you know, I, I take took my training from people like Jimi Hendrix and, and uh, Eric Clapton and Peter Green, those guys. Those guys were my mentors. So Jimi it's, Hendrix, kind of the rock. How about uh, Groove? Where do you get the groove from? Well, I'm Puerto Rican, so... It just I comes naturally? Comes right. I have rhythm. It just, just, just pours out of me. Yeah? All right. Very uh, cool. Um, how about the last one? Jam. Now, that's both a genre but also just an activity where did that come from what inspired you to kind of well, move into being something um 
improvisational and again and i would say well we're all creators the three of us the core guys um we recently added uh joe anderson on sax and that's helped us out and also we have a regular that plays with us on uh keyboards uh shout out to uh david garostos and um it's just that uh we we have this thing that happens when when the bass negator hans just comes up with an idea and and Pete and I just sort of fall in and then we all then just create together. And it's just outrageous. Some of the things we've created. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I think there's something to that, right? The, the energy that comes with um, not just playing music live, but when somebody can kind of watch it happen in front of them, right? Mm -hmm. Something yes. that uh, I had somebody once tell me the difference between like a record and an album. Uh, we do albums now, right? We don't even do albums. We do singles a lot of the times or EPs, mm -hmm. right? Yep. But an album is a product, a thing that you kind of put out there that you're trying to get people to really enjoy. Uh, but back in the day, we made records and records where you just got a bunch of people in a room and you turned on all of the recording equipment mm -hmm. and found you just discovered what happened. And it was a record of what happened that day, right? right? Mm -hmm. And so jam music kind of uh, reminds me of that, right? That uh, they aren't necessarily um, a record. Uh, it's not a, a record in terms of being recorded, but it's a moment in time that, that may never happen again because those different parameters all end up changing. Mm -hmm. So Does that make um, it a world record? It would. Yeah, maybe <laughs> if you're playing world music. You see what I, I did there? So. Yeah, yes. no, that was good. Yeah. So we have a track called... I, do, I love Enya. We have a track called The great, great Divide, which is actually a recording of an impromptu jam that we did live in the studio. Oh, nice. Uh, where it starts out with just a, a musical idea, I believe, that Hans came up with on the bass. Yep. And then uh, it kind of got a little bit of a rolling guitar sound going with it. And next thing you know, we were into a probably a, a 15 minute jam. Wow. And uh, we liked it so much, we we actually put it, it's not quite out officially yet, but it is on our website. A piece of it's out on our website. So check it out. It's so if people go up to uh, www.rickshawlizard.com, they can go check that out. Yes. Yeah, Excellent. there's a clip of that on there. Yeah, did you yes. go back and edit anything or like? Not, not really. Did you like, it's... oh, that was such a good jam, but I did that one thing really well, bad and I, like I, fix that? Or do you feel yeah. like that's part of it? Is that? Well, yeah. I mean, there were a couple things that might have been uh, fixed a little bit, but nothing major at all. And there were some little there. parts on my guitar that I thought, oh, gee, I wish I could have played that a little better. But but all in all, it's it's just a great impromptu jam. And, yeah. and it comes off as being uh, very, almost commercial. You know, yeah. so really? So yeah. it's cool we're, for playing a live situation where we have the time to stretch out a little bit and say we're playing a you know a three set evening or whatever. We'll, yeah. We'll take a tune and uh, kind of almost in a jazz vein. We'll, we'll the middle section will become a jam where we just kind of go off into left field for a little bit and then we'll bring it back. You come back in. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you brought a track uh, from your brand new EP. Uh, this came out just recently. When when did the EP come out? Uh, it was released. Uh, yeah, was it? 2016. Oh, okay. November. So it's been out a November while. November 2016. Nice. Yeah, it's, okay. been out, it's been out for it's been out for a little while. A year, a, year. a little over yeah. a year. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's called Move with Me, and we mm -hmm. have the title track also called Move with Me. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, so I want to take a little uh, listen to that. Do you guys want to set it up at all? Uh, yeah, sure. That's a that's a song that uh, that that Eric here wrote the guitar parts for. It had uh, mostly arranged when when we started playing it. Um, but he wasn't happy with the lyrics, so we, uh, we took yeah. it back, and we, each of us took a turn on completely rewriting the lyrics. And, and <laughs> yeah, then, it was... so it was a collaborative uh, mm -hmm. uh, song, I'd say. Okay. Yeah. Very uh, cool. Yeah. Um, well, we'll take a listen. We're going to do just a, a snippet of it here, so that we can kind of keep the flow going. If you guys are really curious about the entire track, fast forward to the one hour mark of this show. You can listen to it in its entirety. We won't talk over it, and then uh, you can come back and join us. Uh, and we'll get on to the rest of the show. So this is a little snippet from Rick Shaw Lizard, uh, and this is called Move With Me. If you want to move, hang around and come move with me. That's a nice groove. Dance, I love the flute. That sounds great. <laughs> the chimes were a nice touch, though. That was, that was a good combo. Is that a church choir? Then you start to move a rumble in your seat. Now you come slide my way. I'll give you I think this really embodies the things you're talking about though. There's definitely the, the funk and groove happen in there. And that's always a, a, a precursor, almost always a precursor for that kind of jam feel. 
Mm -hmm. um, I guess we have some like jazz folks that also do it, but that tends to be pretty thing. But there's a there's a rock edge to it as well, right? You've got mm -hmm. you got a lot of those feelings as well. So I, th I think it's probably well stated what you guys are doing. So mm -hmm. uh, how long have you guys been together? Start. Uh, we uh, got together in 2012. Okay, so it's so been a little while. Yeah, it's around there. The, uh, so the, Six it, years, I guess. It's interesting because uh, Eric and I actually played in the same band in different eras. Uh, really? Yeah, we did, actually. Uh, yeah, what band, band was that? Second Chance out of Annapolis. Uh, I played in it, uh, I, guess, I guess, a year before Pete played. Uh, after. Well, right. actually, it was complicated. But anyway, the band sort of broke up and then it split off. And then so the guy who originated the band then re got the band going again. And Pete got in the band. Did you guys ever, after leaving the band, did you ever go back to the band? No. So uh, neither of you got a second chance. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, really oh. In, in a sense, we did, though, because we split off and we kept the name Second Chance for a while. So it was a split off of the band. Oh, interesting. So there were actually yes. two second chances going on what? Actually, for a while. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, hey, funny. free marketing. Yeah, right. mm -hmm. and then you had to fight each other to the death. Yeah, no, then <laughs> but you know it's it's been pretty it. crazy how often that 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 we get something like that on the show where uh, we get a bunch of musicians who are like, oh yeah, we had something in common ten yeah. years ago. We had something, you know, we had a band over here that we, mm -hmm. we both met the same person. It's it's an amazingly small world when it comes mm -hmm. to the music culture in this area you, all the it's way true. to Annapolis and you guys it ended up in is. the same group. It goes farther yeah. than that actually because uh, Hans and I uh, actually grew up together in upstate New York. Oh wow. So we've known each other since we were little kids. Mm -hmm. Well that's pretty cool. So you guys are going to be playing this track along with others uh, Saturday, April 28th at Fishhead Cantina mm -hmm. up in Baltimore yep. or just south of Baltimore in Halthorpe right. um, in Maryland. Um, if people want more information or want to listen to some more of the music you guys were talking about, go to www.rickshawlizard.com to check that out. Um, so yeah, thank you for sharing that with us. We You're really welcome. appreciate it. Um, so we're going to move on to maybe the most painful part of the show. Uh, this is where we are going to, um, reveal your ignorance about a topic that you don't care about. <laughs> uh, it is a topic that was <laughs> picked by, uh, the lovely and, uh, talented uh the gin rickies uh from uh they were frederick from frederick mm. they came down um and they had to go through this and then they tossed this at you um which is going to be a tough one uh so uh this is a little game show we call please god just get one right <laughs> With that said, if you do get one right, it's the Super Bowl. You win. We can still go through the rest of them, but you will get a prize from Uncle Archie's uh, box of fun. Okay, so it right. won't be good. So um, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Kinder Egg bullshit. Right. You're disappointed yeah. every time. You're like, I can't believe I ate that that egg so quickly just to try and get to this, and it sucks. All right, I how literally you swallowed plastic. <laughs> So, are you guys excited? Do you oh, know, yeah. Sure. You want to know what your category is? Okay, yeah. You're going to be so Waiting happy. With weighted, bated breath here. I'm I'm not going to try and judge or stereotype you guys, but I have a feeling this one's not going to be up your alley. <laughs> it is about a video game that uh -oh. just recently came out that all of the kids are playing called Fortnite. Fortnite. Yeah. This isn't going to go well, no, is it? No, it's not all right. Go well. no. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is going to be okay. quite a gauntlet. All right. Start it off, Victor. Although released in 2017, what year was the world first introduced to the concept of Epic's new concept, Fortnite? Dun, 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 dun. I Give worded that year. terrible. I apologize for you, Victor. That happens. That so when did fates. Epic first talk about Fortnite? Even though it came out in uh, 2017, when did they first reveal that they were working on this game? 2012. 2012. All right. Do you want to add into that? 2014. 2014. If you'd gone a little lower, <laughs> Victor... 2011. Oh, 11. You man. were so close. Oh, no. Womp. Actually, really good guess. All right. So not bad. All right. Uh, we'll blow through this. This is going to be easy. Uh, released by Epic Games, what uh, famous gaming engine, also built by Epic and named after one of their first popular first person shooters, is this game built on? So it is a, a framework or a gaming engine, right? That they built this game on and it built they built their first popular first shooter game with the same engine it's named after it 
Wow. Yeah, I know. That's it's, a tough one. I was kind of hoping you guys were going to be 14. The Mount Doom. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Any guesses? Do you know any gaming frameworks at all? Castle gaming Wolfenstein. Engines. Uh... I I don't really can't I can't think of any at the top of my head. So there's one there's one called like the Quake Engine and that was used to make Quake, yeah. which is an older uh, one. Mm-hmm. Uh, this one is called Unreal Engine Four. So there used to be a game called Unreal Tournament mm. made by Epic. It was like their first breakout, wow. I think their first breakout game. And uh, so they built an engine so they could build games quicker. This mm-hmm. is built off of that. Fantastic. Okay. So, yeah, you're like, I don't care. <laughs> Things I don't care about. This is a stupid show. Victor. <laughs> Let's see. Two months after the release of its original player versus environment mode, what is the name of the vastly more popular 100 player versus player mode called? Wow. I'll, I'll give, give you a hint. hint it's that battle it's a pretty, something. It's a pretty common name for like something that has a bunch of people fighting. Last man standing. Oh, good guess. Good guess. Do you have one? Uh, step it up a bit. <laughs> they should name it Step It Up a Bit. There we go. <laughs> like that. Step it up a bit mode. Or, no, they should name it after what was the, the Louisiana watermelon guy? <laughs> what was the T Mike uh, Gator King? Right. The Gator like that? King. There yeah. we go. That's the answer. No, it's Battle Royale. Battle, Battle Royale. Royale, yes. Battle Royale. Yeah. See, I, I figured you had a shot at that with one. With cheese. Yeah. Mm. Battle Royale with cheese. Not to be confused with the uh, American version, which is a, a half pound battle. Right. Um, <laughs> so, uh, all right. <laughs> this is going to go so badly. Uh, due to the very similar gameplay, what other popular game is the Battle Royale mode of Fortnite often criticized for being a copy of? Hmm. You know, that 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 thing with the name. Berserker. Uh, I, I like that. Uh, At this point, you just make up a game, right? Right, right. Just try to, I would go for laughs. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, Hell on Wheels. Uh, I like it. All right, uh, and it's actually called Player Unknown Battlegrounds, um, which people for short call PUBG. PUBG, of yeah, course. A lot PUBG. of people are calling it that. Um, I'd rather just go to a pub. Yes, yes. Rather <laughs> be in right. a pub with a girl. Um, <laughs> all right, Victor. All right. Last for you. What type of vehicle must all 100 players jump out of at the beginning of the round of a battle royale? A clown car. <laughs> That's the oh best God, answer. Oh, that so much better. It's a better answer. How about you? What do you have? What a do you t- think, Eric? I don't know. A, a, a tank. Oh, oh, good, good try. It's it's really strange. It's actually a bus. A bus. But it's not a that typical bus. It's actually a bus that's flying like a hot air balloon. And then everybody like skydives out of it onto an island, and then you run around trying to kill each other. Um, it's a fun <laughs> game. That was actually. your second I guess. This I game. know. <laughs> it's not a bad game. Uh, the interesting like dynamic to it is what what PUBG does as well is same kind of concept where you're on this b- pretty big island mm-hmm. and you can basically glide to just about anywhere to get started. So you could be alone to begin with, but there's a circle, and as the game goes by, it goes on. The circle gets smaller. If you're outside the circle, you start dying. Mm. So you have to stay inside the circle. Well, the circle ends up making everybody get closer and closer and closer. So at the end, you're all very close fighting each other, whoever's you know made it that far. Mm. So um, so it's a, it's a really interesting kind of gameplay, but you don't give a shit about this at all. So <laughs> I'm glad. Like Mortal Kombat. No, so no. this is the best da-da, I could da-da, do. Da-da, 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 da-da. Sorry. Yeah. This is the best uh-huh. I could do at a give me question without literally just giving you an answer. <laughs> so you may want to take a moment and think about it. Probably attributing to its popularity, how much does it cost to buy Battle Royale? It's freeware. What do you say? Nineteen ninety nine. He had it. It's free. It costs nothing. It costs oh nothing. It yes. costs nothing at all. You just you, you, go sign right. up, you start up for an account and you're in. And you can just beat up on 12-year-olds. But you have to buy weapons, right? No. No. You don't have to buy anything. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can you can uh, get different skins and do like microtransactions that way, but you can just run around and kill people. Awesome. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't cost anything. The player versus environment uh, version of it, which was originally what they put out, um, that costs some money to get into. Um, I think it's all supposed to be free at some point, but
but there's supposed to be microtransactions, which if you've never played uh, video games much, that means nothing to you. But essentially, you can buy little things for a dollar here and there. Right. Yeah. I All think right. the best feature in the game is probably the um it's 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 obnoxious if you're in first place but if yeah. you get the blue shell it goes straight to the person in front and knocks them out that's so not the game probably second or third passes them you know that's, that's a different it's game good. <laughs> totally different game All right. that is now All right pick but, a a prize the game that from the box Ooh, Uncle Archie's box of fun it's oatmeal it's yeah so Open that up. Let us know what you got here. And while you're doing that, I need you to think about an equally terrible category to give. Yeah, it's very, it's very Sonic. Um, oh, a, what did we get? <laughs> we got Ooh, a, a magnifying glass. An ant glass. burner. An ant burner. An ant burner. An, I like that. An old person monocle. <laughs> um, yeah so uh so now you have to think you have to dig deep into the darkness of your soul and think of a category that is going to make the next artist squirm as much as this category did mm. yeah wow something that you know arguably you want something maybe you would know more about but but maybe not yes well so i i live in annapolis which is a sailing capital of the United States, at least. That's true. Yeah, and, and you've so got the Navy, uh, the Navy Academy there, right? All that good stuff. Yeah. So I'm going to go with America's Cup. America's Cup. Are you good with that? Yeah, that's fine. All right, America's Cup. Awesome. For those that don't know, oh, Victor's also writing it. Okay, that's good. Um, so America's Cup uh, is a yachting race, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, I believe so. Okay. Um, it's the oldest trophy in sport, actually. Yeah. Um, so awesome. I didn't know that. The oldest trophy. In I'm going to use that mm. next week so people know it's coming. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, you got one. That's not bad. That's that's the game. You Please just had God to get, help us get one right. You yes. just had to get one right. All right. So good job on that. Uh, so let's move on. We got a section called Near and Far. Near We're going to find out a little bit more about you guys and uh, what your far. adventures have been See? like. As That's musicians. What it's all about. That's what you it's all about. Now you understand. Mm. All right. Uh, so you guys said you want to start with Far. Um, and you guys said you have a, a really interesting nickname, right? Oh, yeah. Well, you know. So, so tell us about that. What is the nickname, first of all? Okay. Well, my name's Eric Lewis Powers III, ELP3, but, I, but my friends call me Dr. Move. Dr. Move. Dr. Move. Have you ever. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> As a doctor, have you ever saved a man's life who was a juror in your malpractice trial? No. No. Okay. No. Um, but how many times like, do you, re you reuse needles? Yeah. How many times do you reuse needles <laughs> while you're doing your move doctoring? Uh, at least 100. No. but uh, Because they're record needles. Right. Boom. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> ah, <laughs> boom. No, the idea is, uh, you know, doctor of movement, getting you to move again, getting people who are sitting on their sheets not moving, getting them up and moving. So That's did, the idea. Did they feel that, like, Dr. Ash Shake was just a little too crude? or <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. A little on the nose. But uh, let me just tell you real quick the story Ask about how the name came about uh, i had a friend of mine i i was uh i used to move a lot i was divorced and i moved a lot <laughs> <laughs> this one a direction i was not right, expecting right, right. Here. <laughs> and and a friend of mine he was helping me pack the truck yeah and uh he he he's like got this box in his hand i'm standing in the truck he says where do you want this box i'm like uh, oh right over here right here in that little spot right there and he says yeah. and he goes man you're like you're like Dr. Move, man. You know exactly where that box is going to go. You're like Dr. Move. <laughs> Dr. Move was born. That's where it came from. <laughs> Todd, I, you bet your ass I am. I, like <laughs> I played so much Tetris. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I can pack anything. I like that you started with, like, I play music and it gets people out of their seats. But the origination was like, I was moving boxes. <laughs> like, Did you mean the that's origin? Where it came from. Yeah, right. origin. The origin. origin. I like origination, origination better. Origination. Yeah. yeah, both of those. And so, <laughs> and like an origination fee. And so, um, that's hilarious. Thank God you lived up to the name. Uh, yeah. Right, because if it, if it just stuck with the fact that you're really good at moving, at some point you would have just bought a house, and then the nickname would have disappeared into the ether. Yeah. But, well, I mean, to, just to take the story a little farther, he. He's now deceased, and I wanted to do something to kind of honor his that his memory, and that's he went why and moved him. And well, no, I just I dug him up. I and just put him decided to to use the name as my as my, you know, my uh, 
my you know AK moniker my moniker Steve's I was gonna moniker. say yeah that, you know so, so do you ever get together with other musical doctors like Dr. Dre and like um Dr. Teeth isn't that no one? no but let me tell you I I, I, I my, one of my favorite artists is Dr. John Dr. John yes I, I love Dr. John and okay. uh his one of his first albums uh, he had the song Greggy Gigi, gri gri gumbo yaya that was a line and it's great uh, they call him a dr john oh yeah great, okay great, great great song and he's and you know and i never thought of him you know the name came about somehow you know in sure. a different way yeah but it's just funny that you know dr move and dr john yeah, it's kind of cool uh have you thought about joining the spin doctors hmm. yeah we we actually cover a song of theirs <laughs> so what time what, we is love it? those guys what other doctors are there i'm trying to think of all the doctors <laughs> Yep. So, so what you're saying is, uh, this friend of yours, he liked the way you moved. No, well, he. he ba -ba -ba yes, I had to. I guess you could say it that way. Yes. <laughs> so he liked you, the way I moved boxes. Let's put it that way. Yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, all right. So, um, I, we have an, also a near story. Right, we which do. doesn't have to do with a nickname. Pete, do you have a nickname? Did you also? Well, they they call me the Pete Caster, right? The, so Pete, was, the so Pete Caster. The Pete Caster. So All that's right. my nickname. You All go right. cast Pete's. Yeah, he's he's right now. He's Pete casting on our podcast. Right, there you Pete go. casting on the podcast here. There you go. Um, you said you have a, a near story about some exciting news. We do. We have it. It's near. Uh, in time, actually, because it hasn't been released yet. But by the time we get this podcast aired, it will be out. So, yeah. Which um, makes me want to air this faster. Yes. So that we can break news. Adam's got some work to do. <laughs> yeah. Adam, get on this. We're going to put this out before next year, I promise. So, uh, we <laughs> But this, this episode's going to take you a while to fix. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> so we recently were uh, asked to go up and play at the, at the Millennium Music Conference in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Okay, yeah, I've been there. Me. Yes. That's a great place. Great people. Yeah, so we we got to play at a pretty cool little place called the Grotto. But while we we're there mm -hmm. during the uh, during the actual conference itself, we we got to meet a gentleman called Joey Wells. And for those people that don't do music conferences or know what that is, you usually get like uh, several hundred bands together. You get to like um, network with some uh, professionals in the industry. Mm -hmm. You'll hear talks about maybe how to better manage social media or various different topics like that. You can go like take classes essentially. Sometimes you can um, sit down and kind of have a mentoring session. And then you actually get a gig usually that weekend as well. That's correct. Where you can like showcase. Yes. And mm -hmm. so you you met somebody um, so, so while Joe, you were there. We did. So we so we, we met a gentleman named Joey Wells who happens to be the keyboardist for Bill Haley and the Comets. Oh, wow. And, and he's got a record company called... Canadian American Records. This is gonna sound mean, but are they alive? I believe they. Still, <laughs> I think he still plays. Oh, wow. with, I just don't know. Bill Haley in the comments. Oh, Bill Haley I, I recently passed know. away. Oh, um, okay. Well, there so, you go. So he's not around, but I think the comments might still be doing something. Right, mm -hmm. and if not, they'll come back every forty years and do yes. it. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, yes. So it's the Hail Bop band. Yeah. Um, he also was involved with uh, Link Ray. He also recorded with Link, Link nice. Ray, and Link Ray's. To me, a real icon. I mean, he practically invented the rock attack on guitar. So, and yes. so, and what's the announcement? What is so, the announcement is we've been uh, signed with Canadian American Records, what? and will be distributed by the Orchard, nice and Sony Music Entertainment. That's so. amazing. Yes. yes. So you guys are famous. Well, yeah. You, we are not. <laughs> We're just dudes doing a podcast, and you have graced us with your presence. And oh wow! Here's all I need to know is is when you m take your meteoric rise because obviously the bump that we give you from our show, yes, and and maybe the fact that you're now signed, will you come back? Oh yeah, we'll yes, come back. Absolutely, sure. awesome. Well, we are out of time for now. Thank you for sharing that with us. We have information that the rest of the world does not, and that's remarkable. So also coming up this week, Thursday the fourth. Or the 12th, sorry, Box Era at the uh, John F. Kennedy Center for Performing, Performing Arts in D.C. Friday the 13th, Jim Rickey's at Stag Music Head Hall in Raleigh, North Carolina. Yellow Tie Guy at Metropolitan Kitchen in Annapolis. Saturday, we have Seth Keibel at Glen Echo. We have Roundabout at Seven Locks Brewery in Rockville. We have Seth Keibel at the uh, some congregation in Rockville. I'd have to look that up. And Wednesday, the 18th, we have Sam Cooper and the Sleepwalkers at DC9. Please like our posts, follow us, retweet us, and share the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We cannot do you do this without you. Mason of all, thanks to everybody and Rickshaw Lizard for wasting a perfectly good hour with us. 
This has been another wasted hour, and if you just realized that, don't blame us. We warned you. <laughs> yes. around.